Alrighty, Monogatari arcs, some of the most interesting arcs in all of anime as well as some of the best character driven stories as well. Today I'll be listing out my top 10 favourites from the series and to be honest it was pretty hard putting them in different spots because I had never listed my top 10 favourites beforehand, usually just top 5 or 4. But anyway I'll be discussing the reason they're my top 10 favourites as well as maybe convincing you to like them. I always have to put this out there because maybe there's some new viewer watching and are pretty sensitive to opinions, so we don't know. But yeah, this list will be subjective and just my favourite. Also, I'll only be giving my top 10 arcs for all of the arcs up to Kiyomi Reverse which is Zoku Owari Monogatari and nothing after. I've already read a few off-season arcs but I'll just stick with the anime only arcs. So with that out of the way, let's just get right into the top 10. So coming in at number 10, I have Karen B slash Tsukihi Phoenix. Yeah, I know they're both different arcs in R2, but I just felt like putting them together because they share the same themes and the two of them are perfect for each other, much like the Fire Sisters of course. These two arcs serve as a way for us to get to know both of Aragi's sisters and find out why Aragi, well, gets annoyed with them. Their justice is something that he had before and was arguably stronger but here we get to find out how fake their justice is and more specifically Karen's in Karen B. Whereas Tsukihi Phoenix is an arc where pretty much Kaiki's words are perfect for it. Quote, The fake is of far greater value. In its deliberate attempt to be real, it's more real than the real thing. End quote. This quote is perfect for what Tsukihi Phoenix represents as it's a way for us to realize that even if Tsukihi isn't really the sister of Aragi and just an immortal phoenix, she's been with him as a sister for far too long for him to just forget about her status and let her be taken away. As she's an attempt to be the real thing, she's of far greater value. I love how these two arcs specialize in what fakeness truly is and let us take a look at what justice is for the Fire Sisters as well. Both banger arcs and I'm surprised they always seem lower for other people. Now next on the list I have Suruga Devil. Now Suruga Devil from Hanamonogatari tends to sometimes fall flat for people. I don't really know why though. It has an interesting storyline of Kambaru facing her struggles of becoming an adult as well as finishing up some things that were left behind. It's an arc of Kambaru trying to find her way. She has no clue what her future will be and her mental space is a mess much like her room. She's at a dead end and for her to keep moving forward past that dead end she would of course need something or someone to give her a hand. The one that does this would be of course Roka Namachi, her past rival and as you guys know a ghost. Kambaru would have an obstacle to overcome where she might find her answer afterwards. I love seeing her journey happen in a matter of 5 episodes as well as seeing Kaiki again because I'm sure we all thought he had died at the end of second season. Suruga Devil was a great arc for character growth, I loved it. Now up next I have Subasa Tiger. Tsubasa Taiga was amazing for the conclusion of Hanukawa's struggles that went on in arcs before this one. It was the main payoff that we had all been waiting for and how it went, well, it was one shocking and emotional experience. We have Black Hanukawa growing to maintain a relationship with Hanukawa herself, a Taiga who is the manifestation of Hanukawa's envy, and an ending that properly ties up Hanukawa's character arc. Her development and growth is insane as she finally learns to not bottle up all of her emotions and accept her feelings as she eventually lets them out, to herself and as well to Aragi. She moves forward instead of staying behind with her bottled up emotions. This arc serves as an important change in the story and an unforgettable one at that. Tsubasa Taiga is really one of the best arcs and remains one of my favourites. Now next up I have Maui Junction. Maiwi Junction is truly something that I never thought I'd love so much. Not gonna lie, but on my first watch it didn't hit that much, but on my rewatch, well, it really did hit. I love how the main thing I loved about the arc wasn't even Hachikuji but Shinobu. Shinobu's development is what I was waiting for ever since Kizumonogatari and here we finally have it in this arc. Chronologically, this comes right after Nisei Monogatari where Shinobi finally starts talking and watching it after on my rewatch was such an amazing experience. The dynamic of both Shinobu and Aragi is explored in Karen B as we find out some more things about the contract between the both of them and seeing Shinobu eventually warm up to that in Maui Junction is great. This duo is the best in Monogatari and seeing it come to heights in this arc is what I really loved about it. The confrontation with the alternate Kisho is emotional and the shinobi in the original universe just shows us how much of an impact Aragi was on her if they had warmed up to each other in the end. Maui Junction is really good and the Hachikuji part is obviously an extra thing I liked as well. Now the next arc on the list is Kiyomi Reverse, the last arc of Aragi's story and the arc that shows the outcome of his growth that had occurred over the whole entire series. 
This is really one of my favorite final arcs of all time just because of how it wraps up the protagonist in such a suitable way. It shows that it knows who this character is and what affects them strongly. And it then makes them go through this trial in the mirror world to accept the things that he had left unfinished. Aragi's relationships and mindset is fully explored in this arc and one other thing that I loved about this arc that was kind of just a small part was how Hitagi didn't even end up in the mirror world because of how Aragi had no sort of regrets concerning her in the first place. It's amazing how this is shown and it just adds some more importance to their relationship. Kyumi Reverse is a great arc man, just makes you appreciate Aragi's character a lot and is a perfect conclusion for him. Starting off the top 5, I have Nanako Medusa. Nanako Medusa was an arc that I completely loved so much on my first watch. It's an arc that gives us the perspective of Nadako and letting us view who she is as a character was pretty interesting. Before Nadako didn't really have any big highlights as a character but here in Nadako Medusa that changes completely. She's given a really big highlight as we dive into her mindset and view the actions that take her forward into insanity. The visuals are amazing in this arc and the red aesthetic is something that is always on my mind whenever I think about this arc. The ending of this arc is crazy and leaves us more greatness to consume and while Nadiko has just put up a shield for herself to block away reality, she becomes a really compelling character in the series with this arc and she will eventually get her true development later on. It's crazy that just in a few episodes she becomes one of the most interesting and best characters in Monogatari and it still continues on from that in Hitagi End. Next arc I have on the list is Kiyomi Vamp. Man, this arc looked so good in the anime. Kizumonogatari was just greatness. The way it portrayed this arc with captivating visuals and stunning music made it such a great experience to go through. Each movie was great and perfectly added onto the story of Aragi in the anime. I slightly only like the light novel version more because it's more detailed but the anime made some scenes so amazing with the animation and voice acting. Now the plot is the origin of our protagonist Aragi Kiyomi as well as Shinobu who is Kisha in this. It shows us how their relationship started out as well as including other great characters in it such as Hanakawa and Oshino. Well the most obvious thing I loved about this arc was Aragi and Kisho greatness as we dive into how their relationship started out and how Aragi had a great impact on Kisho's character who would then have to revert to a childlike state due to the surprising situation that was brought up in the end. The last lines of the third movie and novel perfectly word out their dynamic and I always see myself coming back to it. Quote, if you want to die tomorrow, I'm ready for my life to end tomorrow. If you care to live for today, then so will I. Thus begins the tale of the wounded ones, a tale of blood that splattered red and dried up black. The tale of our never to heal precious wound, and I'll tell it to no one." End quote. Man this arc was just amazing, such a compelling backstory. Now next on the list I have the Sodachi trilogy, basically all of the arcs from the first half of Owari Monogatari that consisted of Ogi Formula, Sodachi Riddle and Sodachi Lost. These are the exact arcs of where Aragi begins to become a really top tier character. He was already a pretty good character before Owari but this is where he truly becomes top tier and in these arcs is where he finds himself and works upon that. These are the arcs where he remembers how he made himself, well Sadachi had a big part in that and he finally remembers this as the arc goes on. Sadachi's storyline is probably the most interesting one for me excluding Shinobu's and I really love the mystery plot of it. Ogi having a fair share in the mysterious ordeal made it really entertaining as well and it actually saved me from being depressed over Sadachi's story. Ogi was pretty much the light in the dark of Owari Monogatari which is pretty ironic seeing how Ogi actually is like. Aragi's characterization becomes better, we get the best girl and amazing voice acting with her, a compelling mystery plot and an open ending that leaves us thinking what Sadachi actually wrote in her letter in the end. I really love these three arcs, they're all great together. Now onto number 2 I have Ogi Dark. Oh, wow, this arc was just insane. It's crazy how it's one of the shorter arcs but still reveals some of the biggest things in the story. Aragi, Ogi, Shinobu, Tsukihi and even Nadako were really amazing in this arc. We get to find the true nature of Aragi and Ogi's relationship that really shocked everyone. We got to also see Shinobu's character conclusion and what her thoughts on Aragi were after all that she's been through in the series. We also got to see how Nadako is doing after Hitagi N which makes us view her growth and development. Even with that trash haircut, her character is fulfilled well. 
Ogi Dark is just a perfect finale for some of the characters and while Araki gets his true ending in Kiyomi Reverse, here we see him finally confront his own self and eventually save his own self. That really makes the quote Oshino says at the start of the series come in full circle. This really emphasizes the theme of the series and shows us what it had been building up ever since Bake Monogatari. It's just one of the best arcs of all time, Ogi Dark is amazing. Now for number 1, I have Hitagi and yes, the Kaiki arc. I love how it has Hitagi's name on it while well, Kaiki was really the true main character of the arc. Well, he's the narrator and that really makes the arc so much better because I've loved Kaiki's character ever since Nisei Monogatari. We start to get more of an understanding of his mindset and what he sees of other people in this arc as well as the conclusion of Nadeko's rage with him taking the lead and putting her down. From start to end, 10 out of 10 episodes. Every single big moment of this arc is top 1 material, I swear. The main big thing that I loved about this arc well, since it's pretty much the main plot of the arc, it does well with connecting the audience to it. So the main thing that I loved was pretty much all the Kaiki and Nadako dialogue. Each conversation was just too good, especially the last one they had that consisted of Kaiki's speech about people's dreams and goals. That one hit the most, personally and of course spiritually. Kaiki just had to spit facts most of the time and that worked out well for him because he became my top 1 character in Monogatari just after. And guess what? He still is. So that's where I'm going to end it off for today, hopefully you did enjoy it and if you did, make sure to like, comment and share the video around. Next videos are going to be some bangers, I promise. Now, it's been Endless Requiem, peace.